Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade and welcome to another tutorial in the Coding Fundamentals in GML 2.3 series. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about script assets. So script assets are a type of resource or asset you can create in the Game Maker Studio IDE, much like an object or a font or a sprite. And they are one of the two primary places that you will write code, the other of course being inside an object. They are compiled at the very start of the game before any of your other code runs. They are parsed on a global level. And this means that all variables declared in the script will be global regardless of whether or not you use the global dot prefix. And named functions are going to be unbound method variables. So what does compiled at the start mean? Well, this one is pretty straightforward. It just means that your script assets all get run and compiled before any other code in your game gets run. One important note here is that you cannot control the order that script assets are compiled in. You don't ever want a situation in which this script asset would need to run before this script asset because you can't always guarantee that will happen. You want these to be independent from each other. So that's the first thing to know. They're compiled at the start before the rest of the game. Next, we have all variables are global. This means that any variable declared in a script file is global, regardless of whether or not you use the prefix global dot in front of that variable. And that if you later on want to reference that variable, you have to use global dot before it, so that game maker knows where to go and find that variable. Because of this, even though you don't need to use the global prefix, you still should. It'll help avoid confusion down the road. Next, we have unbound method variable. Any named function declared in a script asset is an unbound method variable. What does this mean? Well, the simple explanation, if you're familiar with prior versions of GameMaker, is that they work exactly like scripts used to. But another way to say it is that named functions declared in a script asset will act at instance scope for the instance or struct that calls it. In other words, it will have access to all of the instances or structs variables. And we showed examples of this in the tutorial on script functions. This is the only way to create that behavior. Or to put it another way, the only time a named function will be an unbound method variable or have access to the variables inside of the thing that is calling it is if they are a named function declared inside of a script asset. So what are the primary uses of script assets? The first and most important one is script functions. Script functions used in script assets get you something that you can only get in that way. And that is, as we just covered in the last slide, the ability for the function to run from inside of the instance that is calling it. Script assets are also great places to declare global variables, macros, or enums, though of course you can also declare all three of these things in other places. So you don't have to put all of your global variables inside of a script asset, and you don't have to put macros or enums inside of a script asset either, but they can be nice places to do that in many cases. But let's actually jump over to GameMaker Studio and explore this a little bit more. So here we go. I have the same script asset file that we've been using. So if I come over here, you can see that we have function basics and you can see this little symbol here. And that means that it's a script asset. We'll actually create one of these in just a moment, but we have function basics. That's right up here, our script asset. And we're going to demonstrate a couple different things. Number one, we're going to demonstrate how these variables are global. So note that over here inside of the script asset, we're declaring them without using the global prefix. But if we want to use these variables over here, we have to put global dot in front of the variable name because all of these variables will be global in scope. So if we were to try to reference them as an instance variable inside of an instance, we would get an error. And again, this is why for consistency sake, I think the best practice is to just use the global prefix in your script assets as well, so you don't get confused later on. One other thing that I wanna note here is that when we put these variables outside of a function, they are being initialized. So num, string, and array will all become global variables. However, variables used inside of a function like this do not get initialized because what we are initializing is this entire function. So we are creating a named function with this that will later on use these variables when it is called, but we are not actually initializing this variable. And just as we discussed earlier in this tutorial and in the tutorial on script functions, any named function declared inside of a script asset has access to the variables of the instance or struct that it's called in. So we can have a named function, add value to my variable, declared inside of the script asset. And then when we call this function over here, it will have access to the my variable inside of this object, or to be more accurate, inside of an instance of this object. But if we run this in the debugger, I think it'll be a little bit more clear what is going on. So let's do that. So here we are in the debugger. You can see 
down here that we already have the global variables num, string, and array declared. We can declare my variable and it will be an instance variable. And now we can add global.num 625 to it with our function, my variable equals 625. We can loop through the array again using the global.array to reference our array. And you can see that all of these values have increased from 0, 1, and 2 to 1, 2, and 3. We can set our string with global.string to goodbye and use our function print to print goodbye to a message. So there you go. I want to stress one more time that there is one thing that you can do with a script asset that you cannot do in any other way, and that is to have these unbound method variables, these named functions, which the manual refers to as script functions, and which have the very important quality of being able to access the variables of the instance or struct that they're running inside of. Now there is one other thing that I want to cover. Let's actually create a script asset over here. We can do that by clicking on the plus sign and then clicking on the type of asset we want to create and then clicking on create. And now you can see that we have created an asset which GameMaker has defaulted to script number three. And if we come and look at that script, you can see that it has given us a named function, script three. GameMaker will always do this. It will by default create a function inside of your script asset that has the same name as the script. The reason it does this is for compatibility purposes with versions prior to 2.3. So while this exists for compatibility purposes, you should never do this intentionally. Whenever you are creating your own script assets, you should always get rid of this default function. And then if you want to write any of your own functions, you can write them. And you should never call a script asset either, unless you have a project that is from a version of GameMaker Studio prior to 2.3 that you've converted over. Just to make this simple, whenever you create a script asset, get rid of the script function that shares the same name with the script asset, and always make sure that your script asset names are different from your script function names. So in summary, script assets are assets in GameMaker that are compiled at game start. All declared variables are global. Script functions are unbound. And you can use these script assets primarily for script functions, but they're also very helpful for declaring global variables, enums, and macros. The link in this slide is below, as well as links to the slides themselves and the source code. And that's it. Thanks for watching.